Hey everyone, my name is Eddie Gutierrez and today I'm going to be teaching you about hypercalcemia in a concise manner. First thing you want to do when you have a patient with hypercalcemia, whether it be in the inpatient or outpatient setting, is make sure it's real. How do you do that? Recheck the labs, make sure it's okay. You can also check an IMAX calcium or if warranted, you can check an albumin level and make sure that it does correct appropriately. The next thing you want to do is fire off a PTH. Okay. So you're going to check a PTH, and then this is going to take you down one of two rows. Either you're going to have a patient who has a low PTH, which in most texts is defined as being less than 20, so PTH less than 20, or you could go down the road of somebody who has a high normal to elevated PTH. So I'm going to jot down here, high normal to elevated PTH. Okay. So the more complicated road to go down is the people who have a low PTH. Because you do have to fire off a couple different labs and the differential is far broader. So I'm going to tackle that first. The other side is pretty easy. Okay, so the first thing you would like to check is for somebody to have a PTH related peptide or protein. I don't know which one of the two it is because depending on the literature that you read is where you see this is where you see whether it's defined as being a peptide or a protein. So the differential for this gets a little bit tricky. Okay, so you can find this in patients who have squamous cell carcinoma. You can find it in people who have ovarian uh, adenocarcinoma or breast adenocarcinoma. You can also find it in people who have T-cell lymphomas. So the next thing you can go ahead and check is for the 125-hydroxy vitamin D. Okay? And so these particular, these particular people who have this elevated are going to have other issues that you can find via a chest x-ray. Okay? So you're going to check a chest x-ray. And you're going to see that these patients are the ones who have sarcoid, the patients who have B-cell lymphoma, patients who have TB. Any type of granulomatous disease could go ahead and present itself with an elevated 125 uh, hydroxy vitamin D. The next thing you can go ahead and check is for an actual 25 hydroxy vitamin D level and then you would see this elevated in people who have vitamin D excess. Actually the most common vitamin deficiency is vitamin D but there are people who have vitamin D excess. Uh, one of the things I read said people who take greater than 4,000 units per day. Okay so that's uh, vitamin D toxicity. So let me just go ahead and just jot this down. Vitamin D toxicity, part of my poor handwriting. And then this is the patients who have TB, who have sarcoid, sarcoid, and who have B cell lymphoma. Uh, these people, as I said, was ovarian adenocarcinoma. Uh, also, breast adenocarcinoma could cause hypercalcemia, and also uh, T cell lymphoma. All right. So you knocked out a couple of these, a couple of these things that you could look up, see if you could differentiate. But there are a lot of other differentials that present with normal labs in these respects. So I'll just go ahead and jot this down. Normal here, and then you can find people who have issues with uh, their endocrine system. People who have uh, hyperthyroidism. So what you're going to do is check a TSH. Um, you can also find this in people who have like Addison's disease, things of that nature. People who also present with hypercalcemia with a decreased PTH are patients who have multiple myeloma. For those, you're going to check an SPEP, UPEP. They're going to give you a patient who is of advanced age, presents with achy bones, things of that nature. Um, also, people who have immobilization. So those unfortunate patients who suffer a car accident or a motorcycle accident, they end up being quadriplegic, that they've been lying down in the bed for a while. You will see this. I have seen this, unfortunately, in my clinical practice. And it's one of the things you got to think of. Also, milk alkali syndrome. I've never seen this in practice, but it's, it's scattered throughout all the books. Uh, medications also that could cause uh, hypercalcemia are thiazides. So keep that in mind with your patients. Let's say that in your outpatient setting, you start somebody on a thiazide diuretic, thinking it's going to help out their blood pressure. Next thing you check, their calcium level is going to be elevated. You have a culprit. You know, obviously do your work. I'll make sure you don't miss, miss an underlying malignancy in somebody, but you, you should get your answer from there. Okay? So let's go over to this side right now. Those are all the reasons that will give you a decreased PTH. 
I'm lying, that's not all the reasons, but this is generally where you should get started with your thought process, okay? So now, on this side, things become a little bit easier, okay? Because the most common cause of somebody to be hypercalcemic overall is for them to have an adenoma in their, um, in their parathyroid glands, okay? So, primary hyperparathyroid hormone. This is the most common cause of people who have normal to elevated PTH. Of people who have a low PTH, the most common cause is underlying malignancies, unfortunately, for these patients. So also here, you can find people who have secondary or tertiary hyper-PTH. This, this denomination, whether it's secondary or tertiary, depends on what book you read. When I studied medicine, I saw it being defined as third, being the one of real etiology. But they have been seeing it defined as a secondary hyper-PTH, so you're, whatever you read might, might vary. Something else that causes this is familial hypercalcemic hyper, hyper hypocalcuria. So these people have a, lot of, uh, have a lot of calcium in their bones, in their, excuse me, in their bloodstream, as noted by up here, but they don't urinate a lot. So when you actually check the urine calcium, you're going to find that the value is going to be less than 100. Okay? And one of the reasons, one of the ways actually that you can differentiate these two is that the urine calcium here is going to be less than 100 and the urine calcium here is going to be greater than 250. I don't know what to make of the people who lie in the middle, but these are the general numbers that you can see. You can also check a urine calcium to a creatinine ratio to see, what's, to see if, if you can differentiate these any further. Lastly, you're going to have people who are just on lithium and then they become hypercalcemic because of their underlying uh, medication. Hope you guys can see that all without this thing being here in the middle. Um, and hopefully you learned something. Feel free to ask me any questions. And I'll quickly go over how to interpret all these labs for whatever board exam you might be taking in the future. Thanks for your attention. Subscribe.